and dwelt therein, and went out from this and, bit, and built Penuel. Yes, sir. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the king return to the house of David. Are you thinking something in his heart, in his mind? Go ahead. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, mm -hmm. then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, mm -hmm. even unto Re Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So he you know these people got to go up and make sacrifice to the Lord. This is one of the sacrifices still. We have to take a sacrifice for Passover, take a sacrifice for Feast of Eleven Bread. All these sacrifices must be done. But Jeroboam said, look, man, I want my Sacrifice my priest, my days to celebrate. Let's see what he did. Go ahead. 28. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. Wait a minute. He made two calves of gold. Mm -hmm. Graven images, idols to worship. Go ahead. And said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Man, we finna go up to Jerusalem. We about to do this right here. Mm -hmm. It's too much to go up there. You know how people say it's too much to come to the, to the Sabbath day? And the feast days and all that be too much. It was Jeroboam doing. You fought. If your mind is like Jeroboam, wait for the boom. It's coming. Go ahead. It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold, our God, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in death. He said, Behold, our God. Two calves. He tell look, look at these calves I made. These, these are the calves that brought you out of Egypt. Man, God just killed 3,000 people in Egypt for them calves. He told the Levite, take the soil on his side and kill everybody that's not on the Lord's side. And he made them drink the calves. Calves are the, the, the gold of the calves. Go ahead. 29. And he set the one in Bethel and the other put he in Dan. Mm -hmm. And this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. They started worshiping the idol. They forgot about God's stuff. They went to worship. Go ahead. He gonna do something else. Go ahead. Thirty one. And he made an house of high places, and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. He made a church. Then he got his own priest. Now the Levi. Levi is the only priesthood at this time. Go ahead. And Jeroboam, verse thirty two. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month. Wait a minute. He ordained what? A feast. He put in the law of the eighth month. Who's he mimicking? Go ahead. On the 15th day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. See what he said? Mm -hmm. Like as the feast that is in Judah. What feast is that? The feast of Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. He trying to mimic. But he going to put his spin on it. Just like a lot of people mimicking God. Uh, uh, New Year, putting their spin on saying Janice is our New Year, January 1. No, a bill. In the spring, it's God's new year, new month, when it started. Pick it up again, 32. Go ahead. And, and Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the 15th day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. Yes, sir. And he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places, which he had made. This guy, this guy set up his own priesthood, his own holy days. It's the same stuff people doing in the world today. Same exact, exact thing. And the preachers are the one following they sell their own their worship, which is Sunday. They sell their own New Year, which is uh, January 1. Where do you get this from? They're doing exactly what Jeroboam did, which is evil. He brought this habit on his household. And I'm going to show you. Go ahead. 33. Mm -hmm. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the 15th day of the eighth month. Yes, sir. Even in the month which he had devised of his own heart. He put this, he got this out of his own mind. You got to be careful when the devil talking to you. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We can have a party. We all celebrate. What day is y'all celebrating? You better find out before you start, before you get into that celebration. Go in. 33. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the 15th day of the 8th month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart. Yes, sir. And ordained a feast unto the children of Israel. And he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. This is what he's doing. Only the Levitical priesthood can do that. He set up days of offering. Priesthood. He set up all this stuff that he wanted to do. Same as that thing the world. But God going to weigh in on it. 
Let's go to the next verse. First Corinthians chapter, let's check. First Corinthians chapter 13 and 1. First Kings, excuse me. First Kings chapter 13, verse 1. Thank you. Go ahead. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. Mm -hmm. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Now he stood by his altar burning incense. Something he shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. Setting up them days. Go ahead. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. Behold, a child shall be born into the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon thee. And men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. That's another lesson. Go ahead. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. He don't supposed to be doing this upon the altar. Offering up no sacrifices. Look what happened to him. Go ahead. Verse 4. And it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. God crippled him. Right then. Put his hand up, he dried up. You ever see people walking like this? The hand deformed? That's what he did to Jeroboam. You don't supposed to be doing this. Set up these days. Go ahead. Verse 5. The altar also was rent. And the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And so he took Jeroboam king's ship, took it away from him. Go ahead. Verse 6. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. There was that lack of respect for Jeroboam. He recognized his life. Forgive me. Forgive me. He restored his hand. The man of God restored him. But God, one thing about God, if you sow something, you're going to reap something. He said on these days that he shouldn't decide up, and God will weigh in on his family. Listen to what he said here. Go ahead. Verse 7. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. He told me, come on over and refresh, my, refresh myself. Just like they tell us, come on over there and you're going to get you something to eat since you helped me. Man, y'all celebrate January 1. I ain't going over there. I ain't eating none of that food. Listen to what the man of God said. Go ahead. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou would give me half thine house, mm. I would not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. Because the man of God understood the instructions of God. He said, don't even fellowship with these people at all. Tell the word of God you get up on out of there. Go ahead. Verse 9. For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. Mm -hmm. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. He told him, I can't eat in this place. But we don't read what happened to him. He kind of fell off at the end. His old prophet came in. But I'm going to show you what happened to him. Let's go to 1 first, first Kings chapter 15. 14, excuse me. Trying to get ahead of myself. Let's look at the punishment of Jeroboam. Remember, I said God gonna win to the he 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 uh, healed his arm. He took care of it, but he sold. He made people worship on those days, worship the care of God. So I'm gonna deal with you and your family. Let's look at the first punishment. First Kings chapter fourteen and verse one. Go ahead. At that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. So he got a son. He fell sick. Go ahead. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray thee, and disguise thyself, that thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam, and get thee to Shiloh. Behold, there is a Hijah, the prophet, which told me that I should be king over this people. Yes, sir. He told his wife, Get up and disguise yourself. I need some instruction from the Lord. And listen what happened. Go ahead. Verse 3. And take with thee ten loaves and cracknels and a cruise of honey. Yes, sir. And go to him. He shall tell thee what shall become of the child. Because he didn't know what was wrong with his child. His son, he was sick. Go ahead. And Jeroboam's wife did so and arose and went to Shiloh and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were set by reason of his age. Yes, sir. He was about blind. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam coming to ask the thing of thee for her son. You see how the Lord tell his people what's going to happen before it happens? Mm -hmm. This is why he re 
They want us to read in the book so we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We, he, we still got God's eye and we read and study. But he told Ahaz what going to happen about Jeroboam's wife coming and asking him what's going to happen to the son. He warned him. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam cometh to ask the thing of thee for her son, yes, sir. for he is sick. Thus and thus shalt thou say unto her, for it shall be, when she cometh in, that she shall feign, feign herself to be another woman. She gonna disguise herself to be another woman. So he giving them the heads up. Go ahead. And it was so, when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet, as she came in at the door, that he said, Come in, thou wife of Jeroboam. <laughs> <laughs> he won't hit the check real quick. I know you, Jerry, my wife. God already told me. Yeah. Told me why you were coming. Go ahead. Why I faith is thou thyself to be another? Mm. For I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. So why are you faking with me? I know who you are. Go ahead. Go, tell Jeroboam, thus said the Lord God of Israel. For as much as I exalted thee from among the people and made like and made thee prince over my people Israel. He said, Go tell him this. He made a prince over his people Israel. What he's going to do, he's giving them punishment now, go ahead. And rent the kingdom away from the house of David, mm -hmm. and gave it thee. And yet thou hast not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments, and who followed me with all his heart, to do that only which was right in mine eyes. He said, look, man, I took the house of David and gave it to you, the kingdom to you. But you ain't even followed after my commandments. Go ahead. Verse 9. But has done evil above all that were before thee. For thou hast gone and made thee other gods mm. and molten images to provoke me to anger and has cast me behind thy back. So we just read Jerry read one God, which is Janice. So why people out there celebrating? It's a false year, false new year. You celebrate the God of Janice. Same thing that Jeroboam was doing 70 days and God had him to punish me. Go ahead. Verse 10. Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam. See what he says? So I will bring evil upon your house. Go ahead. And will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, as a man taketh away dung, till it be all gone. When well, he say he's going to kill the, the one that pisseth against the wall, that's all his sons he's going to kill. Every one of them. Because of what you did. Because his son's going to start following in his way after he died. Go ahead. Verse 11. Him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat. Yes, sir. And him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. For the Lord hath spoken it. Go ahead. Arise thou therefore, get thee to thine own house. And when thy feet enter into the city, the child shall die. Mm. And, all, Go ahead. and all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him. For he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave, because in him there is found some good thing toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. That's even powerful. God sees some good in a child. He killed him so that he so that he won't go with, go through what his brother's going to go through. He he don't make it. But I want to show you what happened to his other sons. This is all because of what Jeroboam brought upon Israel in celebrating these days. He said a priest. He set up uh, feast days. And he start rolling and folks start following it. Just like they do on the day. These churches are following the word. First Kings chapter 15. We're going to start at verse 25. Let's see what happened to the other son. I only stand from him want to set up some days that are evil to celebrate. Have a good time. Jeroboam, wicked. Let's see if his son follow me in his way. Verse 25. 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 25. Go ahead. And Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah. Yes, sir. And reigned over Israel two years. Mm -hmm. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father. Wait a minute. He walked in what? In the way of his father. He did exactly like his father. That's mm -hmm. why it's so important parents to break the generation of curse. Of teaching your kids about all these evil pagan holidays. Break it. Because your kids going to carry on what you told them. And these boys carried on. Jerry Bourne should have told them, God going to kill all of y'all. Go ahead. 26 at the top. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And walked in the way of his father. 
and in his, in, in his sin, wherewith he made Israel to sin. What was the sin? He sat up days. He sat up golden calves. He made Israel worship. That's the sin he sat up. Just like they sin on these days of January 1. Go ahead. Verse 27. And Baasha, the son of Ahijah, of the house of Issachar, conspired against him. Mm -hmm. And Baasha smote him at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines. For Nadab and all Israel laid siege to Gibbethon. Go ahead. Even in the third year, Asa, king of Judah, did Baasha slay him and reigned in his stead. Go ahead. And it came to pass, when he reigned, that he smote all the house of Jeroboam. He left not in Jeroboam any that breathed, Ooh. until he that had destroyed him, according to the saying of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Ahijah the Shilonite. Wait a minute. He smote. He smote me. He killed everything. All the sons in his house. Why? Celebrating these days that were set up by traditions out of his own mind. January 1 is not in here. It's the God of Janice. So don't get caught up in these little parties that's coming up. This is a warning to you and to me. We finish with that? One more. Go ahead. Verse 30. Because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned, mm -hmm. and which he made Israel sin, by his provocation wherewith he provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. See, you can't provoke the God of anger. He talking about a day here. Just celebrate the day. Same thing going on today, y'all. You can't sit at the Lord's table. You can't sit at the God party and go sit at the devil party. Let me show you that. Right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. January 1. It's an evil tradition. You celebrate the God of Genesis and don't even know it. But them Gentiles taught us well. Got to make sure we know what we're doing. We know what we're worshiping. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. Go ahead. But I say, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. Mm -hmm. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. So he don't want us to have fellowship with devils. Who the devils? Gentiles, European, white people who set up all these Christmas trees in your house. Who telling you to celebrate January 1. Who, who telling you to go out there and celebrate all these evil days. They ain't telling you about the Passover, Feast of Living Bread, God, Sabbath, anything. They turn their back on that. Look at over that fence. Oh, but they having such a good time. Yeah, you better read Psalm 73 where David said he almost slipped until he came to the house of the Lord to understand that these people are going to the lake of fire. Don't slip. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be at God party which you drink his wine and then go out and do a New Year's Eve party and drink that wine. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> you cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of death. Well, look, you can't be partakers of God's party and celebrate the feast of every bread, eating all that good food, and then you go over there and celebrate Christmas. That's right. January 1. You're going to mess yourself up now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 22. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? So you mean to tell me he get jealous? Mm -hmm. God is a very jealous God. More jealous than any person in this room. Any person that you know, he very jealous. When you choose January 1 over his new year, which is in the springtime of the bed, he get very jealous. Very jealous. You provoking him to anger. You finish with that? Okay. Are we stronger than he? We know we ain't stronger than God at all. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3. You got to watch this thing. We ain't got no watchmen. The watchmen scared. They want to make folk like it. I'm scared of God. I want my resume, my, my report to look good when he opened them books up and judged me. Yeah, Jeff, you did tell him. Keep a bib, keep your ass on. He tell him about Jerry and Christmas. You told him. 
Uh, I think we might mention it. He said the righteous shall scarcely make it in. Scarcely mean barely. The ones that are doing the right barely make it in. So ask yourself, are you putting in the work? It's up to you to realize that. Revelation chapter 3, we'll start in verse 1. This is a faith builder right here. Keep it strong right here. Verse 1, go ahead. And unto the angel of the church is Sardis right. So the angel telling this church is what God said right here. Go ahead. These things said he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thou works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest in our day. Seven spirits and the seven stars are only angels. Those are the seven angels. The Romans are reporting everything that you can find in Ezekiel chapter 8 or 9. I think it's 8. Go ahead. Verse 2. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Oh, hold on, hold on. He said what? Be watchful and it's strengthen strength. the things which remain. How do you strengthen a believer? You give them the book. You don't give them what make them happy all the time. You give them what's going to kill that devil spirit inside their mind. This is what we got to do. Put it out there. He said, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Go ahead. That are ready to die. Who are they? We are. We ready to die. We can die at any time. Go ahead. For I have not found our works perfect before God. God know we ain't perfect. Go ahead. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. See, he gonna come on the world as a thief. These people don't know when he gonna come. He said, if you don't watch, see, it ain't gonna come on the thief of the night when the Lord come to us. You know what? The ones that have the knowledge will be in the wilderness when he come. When that third temple is built up in Jerusalem, we know we're looking for our transportation. Y'all stay here. I'm gone. You don't come way at jail, no more here. Wait no y'all. Cause it need to be pressing. Don't hold on to this stuff, these cars, clothes, money, and all this stuff. It's gonna get burned up. They're gonna take it. You can't hold it. All that money you got in the bank, all the good clothes in the closet. If you got your heart on that stuff, you will stay here with it and burn up and get hurt. Not me. Go ahead. Verse 4. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And there's they, a few names in Sardis, this church. Just like right now, it's a few people in this world right now having defiled themselves with the world celebration, the evil traditions. And we're talking about January 1 right now. Go ahead. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Yes, sir. How are you going to be worthy? You take part of the Passover. You know when the new moon comes up in the spring, we count 14 days, then we got the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Then the 15th day, I mean 14 days we got Passover. Then the 15th day we got Feast of Unleavened Bread. Unleavened Bread. Then the 21st day, last of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Then we count seven Sabbaths to Pentecost. Then we go into trumpets. Then we go into tomb. Then we go into Feast of Tabernacle. You can't get nothing over me. I know this. We gonna celebrate as long as I'm in here. Go ahead. Verse 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. You got to overcome something? What you got to overcome? This word. Go ahead. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Wait a minute now. If I'm celebrating with these people, I ain't no okay. king. If I'm taking part in all this stuff, I ain't no okay. king. Mean that my name ain't even in the, in the book of life. He can blot it out. Don't play with this now. Go ahead. But I will confess this that verse five again. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Yes, sir. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Mm -hmm. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Ooh, that's what I want. Amen. If you don't want this, you need to leave. You need to turn Facebook Live off too. I want Jesus to confess me. Jeff Parker wants to be in your kingdom. Know my name. If you don't think it's that serious, you're fooling yourself. Say that fool your mind. It's very serious. Go ahead. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. A lot of people ain't got an ear to hear. They, they hear so elsewhere. You better read this book. 
Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 33. See, I'm going to watch. God said, I'm going to deal with you. If you don't tell the people. No, buddy, you didn't get me caught up. I'm not going to omit the weight of matters of the law. I might mess up on some of the other stuff. January 1 is an evil, evil, evil tradition celebration. Evil. Janice, go to your Google, you'll find it. I know some of y'all got cleaned up for about to lie off here for the celebration of New Year next year. That's it, y'all be here now. Hmm. <laughs> this is what he said right here about the watchman. What I'm supposed to do, what we're supposed to do as Israel. Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 1. Go ahead. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Yes, sir. Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman. Hold up. So you got to have a man set over you to watch out for you. A man of God, somebody read this book to watch out and tell you, don't go over there and celebrate with these people. Stay with the commandments. But the people inside these churches, they went over there to the world. They did about the world inside these some churches. Sure. Watchman ain't going to bring that stuff in his church, in God's church, excuse me. Go ahead. Verse 3. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. What is the trumpet? He ain't talking about a horn, per se. Not only a horn, they blow the horn by them, but he's talking about you tell them it's coming. You tell them that the pain is coming this way. You tell them that somebody's trying to hurt them, somebody's trying to kill them. You tell them, watch them. Go ahead. Verse 4. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. See what he said? If the song come take away, you told him not to go over there and celebrate with him. But they went anyway. Hey, you clean. I'm clean. But when you sit there with your mouth closed and don't say nothing, God said, your hands are bloody to him. Because you got the knowledge of the truth. You heard it. All you got to do is shoot him on text. God made it easy, baby, to shoot him on text. He ain't got it in front of him. Shoot him on message on, on Facebook. Write him a little note and just say, hey, slide on him. You did your Lord. You got to confront them all the time. Text them, message them, do it, whatever. Go ahead. Verse 5. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Yes, sir. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will not require the watchman's hand. Who the watchman? You. The preacher. He the watchman. God said, I'm looking at you and what you're doing. You trying to please people, make them happy, you better make them understand. Call that blood gonna be on your head, preacher. I feel, I used to kind of like, I'm waiting for God to get me preacher, but I, I, I feel sorry for them. Because the same book they reading out of, the same book they killing people on Sunday and killing themselves. And God gonna deal with them. They watchmen. Go ahead. Verse 7. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Mm. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them for me. So from why, me. So why are you taking uh, counsel from a Gentile? They don't want to listen to the Israelites. They think we crazy. But well, they go over to the pastor so and so, whoever he is, and listen to him. Then they bring the doctrine to the son of the churches and then they start following the Gentiles. Then God said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, don't follow the ways of the Gentiles. That's what we got our learning from. Evil learning. Go ahead. Verse 8. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, mm -hmm. that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Golly. That's tough. The watchman, the pastor, he's God saying, you ain't tell that person that's a strike against you. If you know some knowledge, you don't tell them that's a strike. That blood is on your hand. You can't be silent now. Be creative. You got a way to tell them. 
You got to do it one time. One. Go with me. Verse 9. Nevertheless, 